Hi guys, so today we are talking about graphing linear inequalities. So you want to make sure you found this page in your notes packets. Um, and graphing linear inequalities is actually really, really similar to graphing linear equations, which we just finished a whole chapter on that. So you're probably in really good shape for this. Um, and we're just going to work through a bunch of examples today. So this first one, I want you to imagine that instead of that less than or equal to, imagine this just said y equals 1 half x minus 3. And think about how we would graph that. Well, we would start at our y-intercept, which is negative 3. Okay? My slope is telling me to go up 1 and over 2. Up 1 and over 2. Do that a couple of times. And then I would just draw my line to connect those dots. Okay? So that is all stuff that you already knew how to do. Now, the only difference here is this line represents coordinates. So it represents a bunch of dots that have coordinates where the y value is exactly equal to half of the x value minus 3. Okay? So if I picked any dot on this line, if I found the x value, cut it in half and subtracted 3, it would give me the y value of that same coordinate. This is telling me I want to know not only where is y equal to that, but where is the y smaller than that. Well, I want you to think about where on the coordinate plane does the y value get smaller? And remember, if we're talking y values, we're talking up and down. Well, y values get smaller as you go down, right? So when I see this less than, that means that all of these points underneath the line would also fit this, would also be a, a solutions to this, okay? So less than means I'm shading underneath the line because all of these coordinates represent coordinates where the y value is smaller than 1 half x minus 3. So that's the only new thing today is we're going to toss in some shading, okay? So let's take a look at this next one. y is greater than negative 3x minus 1. So I'm starting at my y-intercept, I'm starting at negative 1. My slope is negative 3 over 1, so that tells me to go down 3 into the right 1. Down 3 into the right 1. Now, before we draw our line here, let's, let's pay attention to something here. This time, we don't want our y values to be exactly equal. Okay, this is strictly greater than. Whereas back here, we had that equal bar. So that line, the points on that line, were part of our answer. We somehow need to draw... A line but without having that line be part of our answer and we do that by using a dotted line okay so a dotted line is actually really similar to like the open circle when we did the number line graphing okay so this again I used a dotted line because there's no equal bar here okay so I don't want that line to be included in my answer and then I want to shade where y is bigger Okay, well, y is bigger going up, so I'm going to shade everything on the top half of the line. Okay, so we're really just graphing the line, deciding if it should be dotted or solid, and then shading one half of the graph. Okay, number three. y is less than negative one-third x. Well, my y-intercept there is really a zero. Okay, so I'm going to put a dot at zero. And then my slope is telling me to go down 1 and to the right 3. Down 1 and to the right 3. Okay. There's no equal bar here, so I'm going to use a dotted line. And this is a less than. So less than means shade underneath the line. Okay. And there's my final answer for that one. By the way, there's a little bit of vocab here that um, shows up on your homework assignment, but I don't really use it a ton, but I'm going to show it to you just so you know it for your homework assignment. So when you graph this line, the line is considered to be a boundary. So it's kind of the thing that divides the coordinate plane into two pieces. And then each half of the coordinate plane is called a half plane. So we draw the line to kind of divide the coordinate plane into two pieces, and then we shade one of the half planes, okay? So again, boundary is your line, half plane is the um, 
half, and it can be the shaded half or the non-shaded half, but either way, they're a half point. Okay, let's look at the back of that page. I've got a few more here. So y is less than or equal to 4. Well, if I had the equation y equals 4, that would be a horizontal line at 4. So here's 4 on the y-axis. And then this does have an equal bar, so I'm going to use a solid line. Okay, and then this is less than or equal to, so I'm going to shade everything below the line. Because everything down here, the y coordinate is smaller than 4. Okay, so for our next one, x is less than negative 2. Well, that's going to be a vertical line where x is equal to negative 2. And notice I'm doing a dotted line this time because there's no equal bar, so I don't want to actually include negative 2. I just want to do everything less than it. Now, think about this. All of your other equations have been written in terms of y. y is greater than, y is less than. And that's why we've been going up and down to determine where our shading should go. If we're dealing with x's, x's don't move up and down. They move left and right. And if you think about this, your vertical line, you can't go above the line and below the line. All right, because it's straight up and down. So less than negative 2, the x values are getting smaller to the left. So I'm shading everything over here. Okay. All right, number 6, kind of a tricky one. Number 6, you'll notice, is written in a different form. It's written in standard form. Okay. And there's actually two different ways you can go about this. I'm going to show you both. I'd like you to write down both, and then you can use whichever way you prefer. So... When we did linear equations, if I had um, an equation that looked like this, I usually prefer to graph it with the intercepts because it's just quick. So if I want the x-intercept, I'm going to cover up the y. So now I have 2x equals 12. Um, divide both sides by 2, and I get that my x-intercept is equal to 6. Okay, so on the x-axis, I'm going to go over to 6. I'm going to put a dot. And then if I want my y-intercept, I'm going to cover up my x. So now I have negative 3y equals 12. Divide by negative 3, and so my y-intercept is negative 4. So on the y-axis, let's go down to negative 4, put a dot. Now this is going to be a solid line because there is an equal bar. But this is where we have to be careful. When they're written like this, you cannot just look at the inequality to decide where to, to shade. I can't just say, oh, that's a greater than, so I'm shading up above. Because this is not saying y is greater than or y is less than. Okay? It's, it's kind of a combination of the two, and so that's harder to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called a test point. And here's how a test point works. I'm going to pick a point anywhere on my graph, not right on the line, but anywhere else. Okay? And I'm going to plug it into my inequality and see if it, it holds true. Okay? And if it does hold true... Wherever that point is located, that's the half of the graph I want to shade. If it doesn't hold true, then I don't want to shade that, and I would shade the other side. Okay? Now, I think that the easiest test point to use all the time, and I use it any time that I can, is 0, 0. So I'm going to treat 0, 0 as my test point. And I said you can use 0, 0, or to use 0, 0 any time you can. The only time that you couldn't is if the line went right through 0, 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug 0 and 0 in for x and y. So I have 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0 greater than or equal to 12. This whole side then is just going to equal 0. So what I'm asking myself now is, is that a true statement? Okay, it is not. 0 is not bigger than 12. Okay, so that means I do not want 0, 0 to get shaded because it doesn't make the sentence true. And if I don't want 0, 0 to be shaded, that means I need to shade the opposite half of the plane. So I'm shading down here. Okay, so that's how a test point works. Now that might seem complicated, but really, this you could probably do in your head. And that's okay with me. You don't have to write that down. You can say, I plug 0 in here, 0 in here. I know this whole thing's 0. 0 is not really bigger than 12, so I've got to shade the other side. Okay? Now, the other thing you could do, if you want to go back to your comfort zone, if you want to use the slope-intercept form, is I could put this in slope-intercept form. So 2x minus 3y 
greater than or equal to 12. If I want it in slope-intercept form, I'm solving for y. I want y by itself. So let's move the 2x. Move the 2x. So I get negative 3y greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 12. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 3. What you have to look out for, though, is look at what I just did. I divided an inequality by a negative, and that's going to make my inequality flip directions. Okay, remember, every time you divide by a negative, your inequality flips. So that's y is less than or equal to, let's see, that would be positive 2 thirds x, and then 12 over negative 3 is negative 4. If I were to go graph that, I would start at negative 4. I would go up 2 and over 3. Up 2 and over 3. Okay. Connect with a solid line. And then I would end up shading below. So you can see that this would get you the exact same result as what we did over here. Okay. So you're welcome to use either method. If you do stick with your comfort zone, just really, really, really be careful if you divide by a negative. Okay, remember to flip your inequality around. Okay, one more thing we have to talk about today. You're going to see some problems like this, where I give you the graph, and then you have to write yourself an inequality. You have to write an answer that looks like one of these. Okay, so you're writing one of these based on the graph, kind of working backwards. And so... Um, here's how I usually handle this, and as I go, I'm going to go through these four questions. I know it's going to take this form, y equals mx plus b. And I don't know why, it doesn't really matter, but I always start here and work my way this way. No idea why, it wouldn't matter if you did it the other way. But the first question I always say is, what is my y-intercept? What is my b value? Well, if I look here, my b value is 3, okay? So I know that my b is going to be a plus 3. Now let's get the slope. And to get the slope, you can pick any two points on the line and calculate rise and run. So let's go maybe from here to here. So from here to here, I would go up 2, so that's plus 2. And then to the right, 3, so that's positive 3. So my rise over run is 2 over 3, so my slope is 2 thirds. Okay. Now I need to know, is this going to be a greater than or a less than? Well, where it's shaded is above the line, so that's going to be a greater than. And then my last thing I need to know is, should it have an equal bar or not? Okay. Um, this is a solid line, so it does get an equal bar. So final answer, y is greater than or equal to 2 thirds x plus 3. Okay. All right, that's that. So, one more. Let's look at this bottom one. Again, start with y equals mx plus b. My b value is right here, and that's a negative 4. For rise and run, pick any two points you want. I'm going to pick maybe this point and this point. So, to get from here to here, my rise looks like negative 4 and my run looks like positive 2. Now you may have done it differently. You may have gone from here to here. You may have picked different points altogether. But when you simplify that fraction it's always going to come out the same. So my rise over run was negative 4 over 2 and I do want to simplify that. I'll do that in just a second. This is shaded underneath the line so I know it's going to be a less than. Okay. And it's a dotted line, so this one will not. Oh, excuse me. This one will not have an equal bar. So I really have this. Y is less than negative four over two x minus four. I should simplify this, so I'm going to say y is less than negative two x because negative four over two is just negative two minus four. And there's your final answer for that one. Okay. Okay, that's it for today. Um, Homework tonight is Lesson Master 5-7. Make sure you find Lesson Master 5-7 in your packet.